Welcome to the workshop. Thank you so much for participating. The workshop is called Simplifying Commissioning with Advanced Lighting Technology. So that should give you a pretty good idea of what's going to be coming up. But in a nutshell, we're going to be showing you some amazing technology which speeds up the commissioning process dramatically, but also gives you some new tools to give you the exact ability you want to set up an installation just like you want it. You don't have to compromise. So, initially, big thank you to David Kreeble and Lensvector for participating and partnering with us in this workshop. And we're going to hear from David Kreeble in the Q&A a bit later on. My name is Matthew Norse. I've been with Remote Control Lighting for 10 years. I've seen a lot of stuff. And I'm going to touch on a few of those things a bit later on. Um, but first off, I want to give you a very brief introduction to who RCL is and so why we exist. Well, let's go back 20 years. We're now 20 years old. 20 years ago, a lighting designer came to RCL's founder, Joe Rustin, and asked him for a solution to a problem project. An unusual project that we thought at that time, but what turned out to be a problem everywhere. She wanted pin spotting in a ballroom and came to Joe, as Joe is this whiz kid, and said, I need to be able to angle spotlights regularly, every day, sometimes more than once a day, in the busy seasons like Christmas. But I can't get a genie lift in. These lights are 10 meters up in the ceiling, or 30 feet. How do I do it? So Joe came up with this idea, which uses a remote control. You press the red button, it emits a laser, shine the laser onto the sensor, the sensor turns red, and now I can pan with left and right, tilt, with the up and down buttons, and dim using these three buttons on the side. Around that time, DALI was also being used quite regularly. DALI was a dimming protocol, a digital dimming protocol, and it is very, very clever. It's easy to install. There are some good interfaces for it. But we're a moving lights company. So we were actually the first and probably the only company at that point to make moving lights which were controllable by DALI. The problem with DALI, though, is it's quite slow. Um, I would move a light in Dali, I'd have to wait maybe a second or even a fraction of a second for the light to move. And that makes it very tricky when you're just sort of pressing buttons or moving a slider to angle a spotlight exactly where you want it without over judging where you need to go. So we changed and just were a Dali dimming company then. DMX, however, had been used for years in the theater space and was originally designed as a theatrical control system to unify the protocol that theatrical lighting products used. DMX is crazy fast. It's almost real time, maybe 23 milliseconds, a new signal is sent. And what that means is I can move my DMX slider on a theatrical control desk and the light moves almost instantaneously. So it's actually quite easy because it feels like I'm moving the light almost with a piece of string. It's really good. However, the interfaces for DMX aren't great. They tend to be theatrical sliders. Um, not very good if you want to pan a fitting by moving a slider up and down. It's, it's not necessarily very intuitive. Um, and we are, in many ways, not only a lighting manufacturer, but we're a controls company because we have a handheld remote to move our lights. The other problem with DMX we found is installations. Cabling of DMX, once done correctly, is super robust. But it's not always done correctly. And actually, more often than not, we've found issues where certain parts of the world, maybe more than others, the cabling isn't the right cabling. They haven't connected the lights in the correct daisy chain string with the terminator resistor on the end. And so, although we love DMX, we wanted to move away from it eventually. But at that point, DMX was the best port of call. So we created our own iPad app, which actually used DMX at its core. It's called iDirect. iDirect was a DMX-based control system which used an iPad to control the lights. How it worked very briefly is like this. I would tap on a fitting. I would then get a touchpad. I'd move my finger around the touchpad. The lights would move. I could use a dimmer on the side. And to select a light, I can even bring up a PDF floor plan of that space, zoom in to where I want to control, tap on a light, and do it all again. It was very, very good for the time, but it did have its limitations. One of the limitations was number of fixtures. It was only a single universe. It still always used DMX cabling, so unless you're guaranteed to have good DMX installations, it's not guaranteed to work perfectly well. In many cases, it absolutely did, but you are still reliant on having someone that knows what they're doing. The other one was interfacing with other control systems. If I was in a ballroom, and no matter how much I would love this to be the case, it's simply not the case that we're the only lights in that space. So you may have cove lighting, RGBW cove lighting, wall lights, 
maybe general illumination lights, and they're going to be controlled by another control system. We couldn't interface well with that control system. We could scale dim, but we couldn't recall scenes or anything advanced. So we wanted to go on to the next level. Enter a new app, RCR Control. RCR Control is an iPad app. It communicates by Wi-Fi to a network. And on that network, you have a mediator box, the RCR Control mediator box. But from that box to all of the lights, and from each of the lights to all the other lights, it is a thread mesh network. Thread is a protocol that works on 2.4 gigahertz, very similar to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, Z-Wave. But Thread is incredibly advanced. It's super secure. It uses the Internet version 8 protocol's level of security. All of the lights can automatically reconfigure themselves depending on the topology of that space you're in. Some lights can be repeaters and spread that information out to all the other lights. Some lights can just act as standard lights that receive a signal and do what they want. And it's also always bi-directional. But how does the interface work? Well, this interface that you're looking at now in the bottom corner, or now full screen, shows two zones and seven areas. This is a hypothetical museum which we've just created for you. And my favorite gallery, because it's the only gallery with lights in, is the Ice Age Gallery. So I'm going to tap in that gallery. This shows the full screen of that gallery. And I can actually zoom in to our lovely woolly mammoth. And I can zoom into fixtures, and I can tap on the fixtures. And I'm going to tap on the fixture which is next to me right now, number three. You'll see now that a control panel has appeared on the right-hand side. I want to turn the light on, so I'm going to tap on the dimmer slider and move my finger along. On the light comes. Pretty easy. If I want finer control of that dimming, I'm going to tap on the slider, bring my finger down, and now I get much finer granularity. This is probably a good time to admit that the camera setup we have, although I think is very good, doesn't do the lights justice, and so you'll have to take my word for it. It looks a lot better in real life than the webcams are showing it. But that's how we control the dimming level. If I want to move that spotlight, at the bottom right of that screen, I have the joystick commands. I can tap anywhere in that circle, doesn't have to be in the middle, and I'm going to drag my finger to the left, and you'll see the fitting move to the left, drag it to the right, it'll move to the right, same for up and for down, or any combination of those two. I can also move the light using the jog wheels. I find these pretty amazing. This is a jog wheel for pan, and you'll see that if I move that little indicator around, the light fitting moves, if I move it back, it'll move back, but you should also see that there's a trail, an orange, slightly darker trail, of where that light is and where it's going to. What that hopefully is telling you is that that fitting is talking back through the thread mesh network to the mediator box, to the iPad, and updating its current position and what it's doing. Why is that important? Well, it always tells the system where it is, and it means that I can take another iPad or even that humble humble, relatively dumb remote control, select the light with a laser, pan it round, and you're going to see it move on the screen. That's amazing. It means I can set up a giant space like we're fortunate enough to have. You know, we've done some ballrooms which are 700 fittings large, and we can set them all up with multiple people doing it. it speeds things up dramatically. For this, though, I'm going to bring it back into the middle, and I'm going to use the tilt just to make sure that we're in the middle of the screen. Maybe a little bit more pan. Nice. This fitting is also a little bit more special because it has color temperature control. I can move my finger on the slider just like the dimmer slider and go from 2200 Kelvin all the way up to 4000 Kelvin. If I want finer control, I tap on that slider, bring my finger down, and now I have much, much finer control. Really cool if I'm setting up some art and I just want to get it perfect. It's really handy when you're dealing with a gallery that actually shows multiple types of art. Maybe not old masters and white, black and white photographs, but different types of art does need different color temperature of lighting to really make it shine. And in a commercial space where it's very important that the art looks its best, because that's the only reason it's there, it lets you tune that from where the clients will be looking at the art. Brilliant. You'll notice there's another tab next to the dimming, and that is beam angle control. This is where I get to talk about some amazing technology from Lens Vector. 
This is a lens vector panel. Lens vector is a manufacturer of electronically adjustable liquid crystal optics. Depending on how you control the electricity passing through this two layer sandwich of glass with a liquid crystal membrane, you can control the orientation of these tiny liquid crystal lenses and bend the light traveling through it. It's awesome technology, but let's have a look at it working using that same fitting next to me then. If I want to change the beam angle, I tap on beam and now I have another control type. It's not a slider wheel, it's actually a pinch to zoom disc. I put two fingers on it and I pull it back in and you'll see the beam getting narrower. If we want to make it wider, I enlarge it and it gets wider. All the way from the narrowest, which this particular fitting goes to is 15, all the way out to 60. The way a lens vector panel works is you start off with a narrow beam collimator or really any beam, but we like narrow beams. So in this case, it's a 15, but it could be one of our sixes, our tens, it doesn't matter. And then it spreads that beam from there, in many cases up to beyond 50 degrees, which is amazing to have that level of control. And that's what I mean when I said at the beginning, technology that can get your installation ideas exactly right. You don't have to go from six to 10 when you actually need an eight. You don't have to go from 10 to 24 when you actually want a 15. You can do that with the lens vector. So it enables you to set up your installation exactly as you want it. I think it's amazing. So let's move on to uh, the demo wall. You see just behind this lovely camera here. Currently we have two lens vector fittings shining at it. There's a picture, a photograph from the Science Museum. Both of these are set to be quite wide floods. I'm going to send them to their narrow beam position. And you're gonna see that the lens vector works pretty well. Both of these lights are now on their full intensity and narrow. I can now go to their wide again and you should see these lights move and get wide. But I'm also now just going to light the picture up briefly. Remember I said before it's very hard to get these lights looking like they do in real life. The way I'm doing this here is when they're narrow, I've actually got them dimmed down a little bit and then when they go wide, I increase the intensity just so that you can see that they've gone wide. In reality, it works a lot better than that, but this is as far as Logitech webcams go. Scenes are really important to us because it enables us to recall positions very, very quickly. You'll notice on the right-hand panel when I click in the Scenes tab, I have four scenes. Nicely lit picture, narrow LV show, etc. Each of these scenes recall the pan, the tilt, the dimming, the color temperature, and the beam angle of either all of the spotlights or just some of the spotlights. And we'll get onto that, some of the spotlights, in a second. You'll also notice that next to nicely lit picture, it has DALI 3 written on it. DALI 3 is a DALI signal because our mediator box can now take in external signals from other control systems. You remember that iDirects, one of its limitations was its ability to interact with other systems. But RCL Control's mediator box can take in a DALI or DMX feed and maybe in the future some other ones. So I can go over to a DALI wall panel, a standard DALI wall panel, press scene three, and those lights will go to scene three. Awesome. Let's talk about groups and multiple selection. If I click into the selection tab in the middle of scenes and control, I can now tap on any number of fittings in order and select them all. You'll now see on the right hand side control panel there are four lights selected. That's just with me tapping. But what if I've got a massive installation and I just want to select a single group? I can tap on group one and it picks both of those lights together. I can now go back into control and you can see two lights are there. I can now dim both of those lights together by using the bounce slider. When I let go of my finger, the slider stops and returns to zero. And the reason this is a bounce slider is because lights might be at different levels to start with, and you want to keep those levels difference the same as you dim them. I can select all the lights if I wish, and then all of the lights get selected, or I can deselect them all just as easily. But what about that large installation? Well, our system works in bi-directional manners. So I can't have a fake installation with lights that don't exist because the iPad will shout at me and tell me how wrong I am. 
So we have a video that we recorded in a real installation with lots of light fittings that we're going to play for you now, and I'm going to explain the screen capture and what's going on. This is the RCL control main interface. We're going into one specific room here, and you'll see that there are four colors of lights. We have red lights, blue lights, yellow lights, and pink lights. All of the red lights are shining on tables. The blue lights are on columns. The yellow lights are on a staircase, and the pink lights are on a bar. If I want to select all of those red lights together, I go into Selection, and then I press Group 1, and all of the Group 1 lights are selected. I can add to that. So I can pick all of my blue lights and yellow lights and pink lights. Now, every light in that space that is RCL controllable has been selected. We now go into the control panel. 79 lights have been selected. I might want to dim them all together, so I can use that bounce slider, and all of those lights will dim together, maintaining where they are in dimming level compared to each other. We can rotate them and tilt them, like we're doing in the bottom right with the joystick command. When I let go of that joystick, it will return to its center point, and all of the lights will stop moving. So we can actually move all of these lights simultaneously. Color temperature control. It might be a lovely afternoon. 4,000 Kelvin sounds perfect, but wow, where has the time gone? Let's crank it down to 2,200 Kelvin and enjoy a lovely, warm, evening, romantic meal. We can also control the beam angle of all of these lights together using the pinch to zoom disk in the beam angle control system. So how about a quick recap? What have we seen today? Well, hopefully you'll agree that you've seen some amazing technology. First off, Lens Vector. Can't thank them enough for partnering with us. But for me, Lens Vector is an amazing piece of technology. Remember at the beginning I said I've been with remote control lighting for 10 years now. I've actually been with remote control lighting kind of for 11 years because in my middle year of university, I came to work with RCL as a student and was fortunate enough to be sent all around the world. I would be sent up long ladders, high genie lifts, to help commission and set up light fittings, but also to meet people. And one thing I learned back then is, no matter how cool it is to be able to move a spotlight from 30 feet up in the air from the floor with a remote, if I need to change the beam angle because the picture on the wall is suddenly a bit bigger, I'm gonna to have to go up and down the ladder again. So it stuck with me. What RCL really needs is variable beam control. So in my final year back at uni, before I came back to work for RCL, I actually designed a variable beam width LED lamp. That shows you how, in my core, variable beam width is. And LensVector now releases this amazing bit of technology, fully electronic liquid crystal beam control optic. And it's so thin, you know, it's probably five mil thick. And what that means for us is, without mechanically extending the length of the snoot or adding motors, multiple optics, we can change the beam angle from a narrow, say, six degree, all the way up to 53 degree. Equally, in the future, and we can poke David about this in a minute on the Q&A, he suggested that very soon we might be able to control more than just the beam angle. We might be able to make a linear lens, a portrait lens, great for wall washing, great for aiming at art, which is something I love doing most of all. And then, of course, RCL control. The third iteration of remote control lighting's ability to control our lights in one day, maybe others too. It's been designed with the end user in mind, be that a lighting designer or, in fact, an end user in a ballroom. It uses wireless technology. Great for existing projects that's already got track in the ceiling. Put some RCL control lights on that track, plug in your mediator box to the network, and suddenly you're going. You don't have to run tons of DMX cabling, which someone might not even install correctly in the first place. It really has been designed with that interface in mind. But it's all very well and good. You watching me control it, who's been controlling it for over a year now, wouldn't it be nice if you could control it? So our engineering team, have dedicated an entire space so that you can have a play with it virtually as well. In one of our meeting rooms, we've set up two lens vector lights on the ceiling and a virtual version of the RCL control app running on a Mac. So if you're interested in playing with it yourself, seeing how awesome it really is, drop us an email at sales at rclighting.com or give us a call and we'll book you in, get you a time slot, and you can have a play.